G'day, my name is Tom, this is the Flight Studio channel. Welcome back to some more Microsoft Flight Simulator. Today we are in Nagasaki with the Carinado M20R Ovation. And we're flying from here to Sausage Ume or whatever it is. Uh, let me give me a second, I forgot how to say it. Um, Soso, wait. Swan or Sergio Mare in uh, Japan. We're checking out not only the M20R Ovation in this current format, and we're also uh, looking at the uh, Japan World update for the next couple of weeks. So we're starting from here, and then we're flying off to, yeah, flying off from um, that airport I said before. Swan or Sergio Mare, or Swan or I don't know how to say it. Been a while since I said I was talking in Japan. And then we go from there to the next airport and so on and so forth with all the different aircraft. So we can have a look and see what this um, update has to offer, this world update has to offer. So there's a total of six new handcrafted airports, a lot of different architecture stuff which we might not be able to see the way we fly. And yeah, so let's get into the aircraft. We're flying Japan, no, in Julia Alpha 0930 because it came out September the 30th, so I did it in the US style because it's quite cool. Because Japan's, um, Japan's um, aircraft it goes uh, Jet Alpha up between 0000 to 9999, so I figured I'd fly 0930 today. So we are in the aircraft, so we might as well quickly have a quick run through of the aircraft itself because it is pretty unique. So you have your um, gauges at the top left there that gives you your fuel flow, your left and right fuel capacities, your outside air temperature, your vacuum gauges, your amp gauges, your. and then you can push that for VDC, whatever that does. And then you have your. Engine gauges on the top right here, it gives you your RPM, your manifold pressure, your cylinder head temperature, your uh, uh, exhaust gas temperature, oil, oil pressure and oil temperature. All temperatures are, registered, is, uh, are measured in Fahrenheit, whilst the manifold in NHG and PSI for oil pressure. Coming down here is all your flight in instruments, you have your, like your speed, your altitude and altitude, your... Um, your bearing selective thing here, whatever that does, your nav course, <laughs> excuse me, I'm just burped, then you have your, um, then you have your, um, turn, turn coordinator, which shows you how much pitch of, um, on the left and right, how much roll you've got, then you have your, um, your heading, your HSI, your vertical speed indicator, and your, um, course which changes twice, as if I press this, this will change for that one, and then you also have a course indicator selector right down there as well, which changes that one, on. so if you need two courses, there you go. Then let's keep going, down here's your fuel selector, which I'll have it on that for now, um, then you have your lights indicator, your vents, which we need to turn on the rotating beacon now to start, we'll get ready to start the aircraft, and all that good stuff. And then, yeah, then you also got your yoke, which has your autopilot in this to get it, your trim up and down, if you need it, which I'm just going to be flying autopilot, then you've got your seats, then back down here, where you have a couple more things over here, so you have your um, electrics there, then you have your fuel flight, flight and gallons to destination, and all that stuff, you can actually flick through everything there, then you have your, your magneto switch and your ignition switch, pretty cool. Then you have all your other switches here for like your pumps and tri elevator trims as well, which I might turn that on and everything like that now. Pino heats on. Standby vacuum and everything like that. And you also have a high boost if you want to, which doesn't really do much of a difference from what I've experienced. So over here is all your avionics. You have your enunciator, your GPS, your ADF uh, for my Bendix, and then you have your Bendix like, radio, then you have your Bendix autopilot in the KFC 150. Then you have the uh, squawking thing, I think, or DME, and then you have your squawking um, panel squawk box there. And yeah, so what you're going to do also too, as well, you can customise everything you want on the um, tablet here if you press on the yoke. You have this um, iPad here thing here, so you have your static elements, your external power, your tow bar, your pilot show and hide, your co-pilot show and hide, co-pilot door, and baggage door. There you go next, then you have your startup options. So you have your cold, uh, cold and dark cockpit, which we are going to switch on now, because we are in the parking spot. You can go ready for taxi and ready for takeoff. We're going to turn the uh, that on, and then we're going to hide that, just like so. Anyway, 
we are going to get ready to go. So we're going to turn on the um, battery. So as you can see, all of your digital displays come up. So that's your um, actual altitude selector for the autopilot. Turn on your auto. Turn on your um, altimeter. Altimeter or no, not altimeter. The your um, yeah, alternator. Turn on the alternator. What am I talking about? I, I should know cars. Cars have alternator so did planes. And you can hear everything turning on here. So you put the propeller into full. Then you put the mixture to full as well. Select your fuel tank of choice. We're going to choose the left fuel tank. Push that full. Then turn the boost pump on. You can see it's at 11.7. .7. Then you push that down it will go back to zero. And then we can start the engine ready to go. So we're ready to go. We'll start the engine. And it will just right, fire right up. Um, this plane has had an update since it came out. There's actually other aircraft in the area. Shout out to Godly, Presence One, Katana HGJ, and the Dire Sage and Driving Criminal. Uh, welcome. Okay, let's see if how he takes off. Oh, well, and there he goes. Good takeoff, Godly Presence. Presence. There's a lot of people taking off here, so hopefully. So let's watch them. So obviously, I think that's a actually convoy because they're both in. Um, King Air 350s. This was filmed on the Monday that the Tower of Sailor video came out. I'm thank, going, thank God that video had audio because when I took off, I noticed my microphone was blinking like it's muted. So hopefully we're good to go now. So now we've got the air, everything on. Let's turn on the AV Radio Master, which for some reason turns off the clock when you have that off. So we'll go ahead and get clearance and get ready to go. Nagasaki Ground, Juliet Alpha 09er 30 IFR to Romeo Juliet X Ray 8 ready to copy. Juliet Alpha 09er 30 is cleared to Romeo Juliet X Ray 8 Airport and filed. Take off runway 32 climb and maintain 10,000 feet. Departure frequency is LNE 21 decimal 0 squawk 756. Alright, let's go. We got that ready back. Juliet Alpha zero nine three zero cleared to Romeo Juliet X ray eight airport. Take the parking brake off. We are idle at seven with our temperatures warmed up to hundred thirty four actually hundred thirty five. It's climbing very slowly. Yeah, let's go. There's a TBM right next to us. Okay, just gonna get to a very safe position. Don't go too far because I don't want to block that fire engine. Let's contact our taxi. Ground, what? Alpha, yeah, contact the taxi. Okay, let's go in there. Juliet Alpha 09 is cleared to Romeo Juliet X ray 8 Alright, let's taxi. I'm going to start moving now. Taxi to and hold short runway and follow the, a taxiway, Bravo to follow the blue line to our takeoff spot. So let's see how this goes. Okay, now we we'll just follow the taxiway to the designated runway. Make sure we're staying around about 20 knots. And yeah, we'll just get out of here quickly. So this, so yeah, this is Carinado's latest aircraft for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Oh, I'll just make sure we're slowing down. Um, this is one of two aircraft they have. They also have the Cessna 182T, which they did a pretty... Uh, awful execution to that, personally, compared to what it, this is. Like, this is their very, this is their second aircraft, so we're sticking around at 20 knots, obviously. So you see there's a couple of aircraft here, hopefully that person's got taxi clearance and stuff like that, hopefully that person's going to take off. Mage, Mage Jin, shout out to you as well, and Driving Criminal, shout out to you. Hopefully they're taking off, because otherwise they're going to be in my way. Because this, this plane is actually taking off, so don't just sit in here. I think that aircraft over there is still landing in here. So yeah, we'll make sure we're managing the speed correctly. I think that aircraft is landing into this airport, so I guess we're waiting for the 787 to land. We might see some wing flex going on there. Some good old flexing on the nation, if you know what I mean. All off the country in Japan. So we'll see if that guy needs to take off, because otherwise that guy over there needs to go around. He's at 900 feet. This is going to be interesting. Yeah, I know I'm following the taxiway navigation, but you can see if I go left, you can see Nagasaki on the air uh, on that terminal there. It looks very cool. Um, the actual, but the actual bum. Um, okay, yeah, he's taking off. Look at him go. He's taking off. Thank God for that, because I'm about to come behind you. 
Alright, so we're going to let uh, the dinosaur at Dyer's Age uh, land. He's 500 feet off the ground, 500 feet in the air. He's landing here in Nagasaki, so I wonder if he's been in a long flight. If you are the Dyer Sage, let me know down in the comments below what have you been up to. Where have you been? In your 7878 eight, uh, Dreamliner. We're about to see this landing. Oh, that's pretty low pitch. I hope he um, lifts off a little bit, lifts up a little bit. Oh, he looks like he's doing way nose down. Put your landing gear down, mate. If it's not down. Yeah, no, nah, he forgot to put his landing gear down. <laughs> that's not how you land a plane. You need wheels. That's why it bounces like that. Oh, my God. You forgot your land. Okay, no, nah, he's landed. He did it right. Wait for him to clear off. Because I have live bait, I've got... Oh, AI traffic. Now I need to contact tower. Let them know I'm ready to take off. Nagasaki Tower Juliet Alpha 0930 at runway 32 ready for takeoff IFR to Romeo Juliet X ray 8. Alright, we're. Juliet Alpha 0930 cleared for takeoff runway 32. Alright, let's go. Let's put the short flaps are down, one notch, ready to go, and then we'll get cleared ready to go. For takeoff runway 32 Juliet Alpha 0930. Alright, so that aircraft is now in the thing, he forgot to put his, um, yeah, he forgot to put his, um, Landing gear down, it's making sure nobody else is landing. We are clear. Left, clear, right. Now, uh, Carolina has also fixed the camera orientations. So now, left is left, right is right. So now we're going to get into it. Let's take off this big, massive runway. So the flight is about an hour and 50 minutes long to get to uh, Swan Air, Swan or Jima. I call it Swan or Jima. Oh, this plane just spawned right in front of me. Excuse me, I'm going to have to land and take off. Right, I don't know whose um, plane that is, but I'm going to go right behind, right for a while. See ya. We're off. Alright, we've got our airspeeds climbing, our temperature and pressures are good. We are going to go start lifting off now. Just like that. So he's off to his parking spot now. Looks like he's doing things legitly. Obviously, I think he's talking to ATC and stuff, which is absolutely amazing. So, Dire Sage, it's good to know you. Hopefully, I want to want to know if he's actually a YouTuber. I want to know what um, this aircraft would look like. Gear up, flaps up. Um, we'll keep going for a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and um, of to the autopilot of of that, and then that will make me start to adjust the um, pitch right here. Pitch right, autopilot pitch reference here. This is what you do, you don't adjust your... So we go a little bit higher. Whilst we climb up to 10,000 feet. Just like that. A little bit more. And then we can constant then when it tells us to... Um, contact departure, we can do that. We can make sure we are in... GPS ground, I forgot to change that. 1, 2, 1, decimal 0 for 9, Right, let's turn this on, let's we'll flick out to GPS, turn that nav on, and then away we go. We're off. Nagasaki departure Juliet Alpha Zero Niner Three Zero is at eight. So very good takeoff for day. Juliet Alpha Zero Niner Three Zero Nagasaki departure continue as planned. Alright. Altimeter three zero decimal zero zero. Okay, make sure that's calibrated, which it is now. So let's talk about, whilst we're climbing up to 10,000 feet, we might as well start talking about what this update has to offer. This is patch 1.9.3.0, just like I said. And the main thing is, the new world update, which is what we're flying to, we're flying around in, um, has launched. This gives you six new, six prominent Japanese cities, so that's Sendai, Takamatsu, Tokushima, Tokyo, or Tokyo, sorry, Utsunomiya, and Yokohama, or Yokohama, depending on how you pronounce it. And six, equitably handcrafted airports. We just took off Nagasaki, that's one of them. Then you have Hachijiojima, Karaba, Kushiro, Nagasaki, Shimoji Shima, and the one we're flying to is Wanose Shima. And then they will also talk about there's new countryside um, architectures, and two dozen landmarks, but there's lots of points of interest, new points of interest. Like, such as um, skyscrapers, iconic bridge, and shrines galore. A new landing um, new landing cha um, challenges, which gives you a couple as well. So, what does the patch new patch bring? So you have 
Free new airports added. You have Lima Echo Bike Golf, Lima Foxtrot Lima Charlie, and Papa Alpha Foxtrot Romeo. So that's Malaga Airport, Clobot Farad Auvergne, and Bryant Army Airfield Heliport, um, um, yeah, Heliport um, respectively. So the Fredio Airport is good at adding airports in updates, which is absolutely amazing to see. So there are some many airport improvements. There's 60 airports uh, improvements based on community feedback. And control towers added to 700 plus US airports. So that might include like IFR clearances, ground, taxi clearances, and everything like that. That's absolutely amazing. So that's very cool. So in terms of the user, user interface, there's a sensitivity screen is now displayed correctly because as in case you don't know, it's sensitivity. Kind of sort of changed last episode as I discovered when I flew to Kit Fox STI. The manual cash management UI has been approved. ATC options should be now currently be saved. That's including your tail number and flight number and all that good stuff should be saved. Livery selection menu now should work as expected. Um, that's where you select. And then the music can now be deactivated before or during the initial download on startup. So if you don't want to hear that annoying music, you can actually turn that off. In terms of aerodynamics, the collision problems at negative altitudes have been fixed. That's great. Um, you also have braking power on ground has been tweaked to reflect more realistic braking distances like I showed you there, it's actually a bit better. Um, fuel consumption update mass problems has fixed for some airplanes, I don't know which airplanes they are, we'll find those out. Air, air, aircraft gyroscopic stability can now be set on our SDK tool set, that might be including this aircraft as well. Uh, planes, incorrect energy formulas have... Okay. Let me do that. We're not doing too badly anyway. Climb and maintain 11,000 feet, Niner Tree Zero. Okay, so let me just do that. So you come here, slide down to 11,000 feet, press arm again, and it will do, do it manually. So rather than go to vertical speed, change your vertical speed, what you should do is go to your um, pitch reference there. So your up and down button here. That's how you change the um, pitch rather than, rather than vertical speed, because vertical speed doesn't work all the time. So. So back to this. Um, so what I was talking about was the um, aircraft gyroscopic stability can be now set, so that might be fixed into here as well. So energy, incorrect energy formula resulting in accurate audio pilot behavior has been fixed. Um, that was a problem with the Carinado aircraft. Um, if you remember the Cessna 182, it kept swaying from side to side. Um, that's like in the correct autopilot behavior. Um, that's now been fixed. And it's also fixed here because this had the same issue when it originally came out. So we're off to Gokyo now from Ole to Gokyo. That's an 18 mile flight. So just so you know, estimated time on route means estimated time till the air, air, when we land in the airport. But uh, this aircraft's climbing so nicely. So if we look at the left window, can we see any of the new structures at all? Not really because they're very tiny. Uh, when we switch to, when we get to, oh, okay, we've got a bit of a wind strike there. Um, so yeah, so the inaccurate autopilot behavior has been fixed. Over, autopilot overshooting altitude capture during descent has been fixed as well, and allow up to 8,500 max climb speed after the new autopilot is now more accurately respecting 6,000 feet per minute. That's pretty good. That's better. Then for visuals and animations, they fixed the wing flex on the 78710 Dreamliner, which will be flying the Dreamliner at some stage. We'll do a very short route with it. We, don't be, we won't be doing like six hour flights on this channel. I don't have the time to do six hour flights on this channel. Uh, it also fixes the runner animations on the Beechcraft, Beechcraft King Air 350i and fixes the graphics glitch which switching between cockpit and external views with the 152. I never had an issue when we flew the 152 a couple of weeks ago. And the A320 Neo fixed issues related to Copart autopilot button lights. So there are fixing issues with the A320 Neo. I've heard that uh, play was pretty was full of bugs because lots of people will fly the A320 Neo because that's what people do, which is fly, um, fly on their jets so everything they to do for, for realistic flights. So say if you're planning to go to a to, planning to go to like a holiday in say 2021 because you can't go anywhere because of you know what situation. Uh, you can do that now. So, that is the visuals animation. So, the GA systems. 
The Cessna 172 Skyhawk, you can fix the impossible, impossible connection with ATC when bus 1 is on, bus 2 is off. I don't think I had any, I don't think, no I didn't have any, I, I thought that was actually something the real aircraft did. So C208 Caravan, fixed PFD and MFD balance issues between pilot and co-pilot. The DR400 can now request ground ATC, ground services to ATC. The G1000 can fix the checklist camera issues after starting engine procedure. The 152 and 152 Aerobat, which will be flying in a couple of weeks' time, the Aerobat. Fixed PDO heat not working. And fixed co pilot not setting master switch on during start engine procedure. That's the same thing for 152 and 152 Aerobat. And the TBM has a fixed fuel flat incorrect. Fuel tank incorrect tool tip. Which is cool. When we're passing 9,000 feet, we're actually growing very strongly up 1,000 feet per minute. Which is good. Turns on the avionics, the Garmin avionics fixed issue with auto switch from nav to localizer in approach. Fixed warrant country code. G1000 performance improvements when displayed in the nearest airport page. It is now possible to activate approach legs on the G3000. Fixed um, elevator change from GPS to V011 when a flight plan or approach is loaded. That's in the Cessna Skyhawk G1000. Fixed crash when deleted direct to flight plans in the C172 Skyhawk steam gauges. This 208B Grand Caravan. EX fixed default state of avion to stand by and wait for the bus guard to which is contact Tokyo Center on 126 decimal 1. Then contact Tokyo Center. Going to 126.1930. It's doing a good job. Yes. Tokyo Center Juliet Alpha 0930 is climbing through 9,500 feet for 11,000. And the CJ4 upper menu and engine buttons are no longer in operation. Tokyo Center Tokyo Center. Continue to Tokyo as planned. But yeah, what's our cruising speed now? We're currently doing 174 knots ground speed. So that's probably about what the cruising speed is. It's actually doing a great job climbing. About 1,000 feet to go. We're passing 10,000 feet at the moment. This plane's doing so good. But yeah, back to um, the systems. They fixed a couple of things with the airliner systems as well. F fixed APU fuel flow. Fuel flow shutting down left engine. That's been an issue to a lot of people I've noticed in a Facebook group I'm part of. The Boeing 78710 Dreamliner. Safe airbox safe for 20 Neo. Fixed lack of elevator uh, with FBW at low speeds. Fixed APU fault light behavior. Fixed back thrust display. Altitude target can no longer be set to negative values in the 787 Dreamliner. And fixed row um, V reference speeds in the Boeing 747-800 or 8i. So in terms of the avionics of the, av um, of the um, airliners, you, uh, HUD colors and layout improvements. Fixed missing runway in the MCDU performance page. Improved disappearance of legs too early when following a flight plan. Stars are filtered to display the ones connected to the selected runway in the MCDU. Invalid entry is replaced by not around land in the MCDU. Alright, we're going really high up. Let's go. 190. Climb and maintain flight level 190 Let's keep that going. Let's arm that one. So, actually, no, it's still climbing, isn't it? Oh. Right, we need to increase that again. Back to... There. There we go. Just like that. Anyway, back to this. Um, so then it fix says so it's to run it say invalid entry and it will say not allowed. I think invalid entry is more correct. And Airbus A320DO flaps F indication replaced by forward flaps completely deployed. Weather. The wing gradient when getting close to the ground on live weather has been fixed. Lightning has been added when applicable. Um, I've never had a problem with the weather at all, I don't think, anyway. Uh, it's actually been pretty reliable, this weather, personally, but hey. Um, for the marketplace, then obviously our marketplace is used for getting the world update for Japan, which so far is absolutely brilliant. Um, so now we got average rating has been fine tuned for more accuracy. Third party filter is now sorted alphabetically. An improved notification system for content bought outside the marketplace in existing in the community folder. So that might be including like deliveries and stuff that you have as well, which is absolutely amazing. So now we're going to cost you now. So now we've got the installation method. The title is also on, on audio is properly muted when the window is out of focus. Graphic settings UI during onboarding has been fixed. Apply and save pop up now displays only once during the graphic settings in the onboarding. 
which I don't even know what that's supposed to be. Localization. So there's very so few are not English speaking. Various typo fixes of multiple languages. Fix and then we've got yeah that's it. So for cameras we have fixed visual glitch happening in camera cuts. Fixed wrong out level of detail selection when a camera cut happens. Camera reset function does not revert cam speed momentum due to default values anymore. And then you've got different inputs. So you've got new default, default presence for the CH Eclipse. Track IR can now be enabled. So if you have track IR like I do, I just can't be bothered getting it out. It can be enabled or disabled in the camera panel. Track IR is now disabled when on the pause panel and, and improves support for the logic. Door set multi panel. Back on track should no longer show the wrong airport for the bush trips and world. Ocean rendering has been improved. Web scales, FOMO reflections. Water mask has been edited to display actual aerial image near the shore in some areas. Luminance have been tweaked for some photogrammetry cities. That's clearly Napoli, Darwin, San Gorgonio, and Las Vegas. I didn't know um, Darwin was um, photogrammetry. That's cool. Uh, fixed territory issue which was causing errors in Kilo Ticks in the um, in uh, Kilo T uh, Tango Echo X Ray Airport. Water elevation has been updated to improve rivers and lakes in um, Canada. And then fixed detail map rendering around runway, runway and taxiway borders. That is the actual change log for patch 1.9.3. That was a bit of a blab a lot. I do apologize for that. So now we're going to talk about some of the things that are going wrong with this update. So now um, some of the issues include the VFR map crashing the game. That's something I've definitely just experienced the, um, the other day. Um, if you press V on your um, keyboard, say if you're watching this on the background, it's going to adjust your volume and adjust my headphones. Um, if you press V, um, your game will crash. So do not press it until a patch has fixed that. Um, I highly recommend just changing. Okay, let me just see if I can adjust that now. Okay, we've got a little bit of wind up here. Hopefully it's not going to be too crazy. Hopefully it's not going to be 20,000 feet, actually. But yeah, you can't really see much up here, unfortunately. It might take a photo when we get to 19,000 feet. So if I press scroll lock, yeah, we're meant to be at 19,200. So yeah, 20,000 feet is our um, max um, altitude for this um, trip. So yeah, um, so overall it's a pretty, pretty good update. Um, there's still things that need to fix up, such as, yeah, like I said, the um, VFR map needs to be fixed. And I think there's a couple, still a couple of issues with the A320 Neo that they need to work out and everything like that. How to fix, as well as some issues with the VFR that I can't turn the lights on. As well as some other things as well. So to turn all the lights on. Um, ignore that, that's actually a bug with this aircraft. But yeah, overall, this update's very full on. Um, it um, did take me long to download it at all. I think it was like an 8 gig, up, 60 gig update. And yeah. So let's see how we go. We're doing 150 um, ground speed now, apparently. So hopefully that's not too hectic. We're fasting 15,000 feet. So yeah. We're, we are nice nautical miles away from the next bit. So yeah, that's pretty much the um, um, light sim news. Um, obviously, there's big things. I've turned some new DLC coming out. Um, every month for this game, which is absolutely insane. It goes to the marketplace for quality control. Um, a lot of people I've noticed on a forum say, please take down the Kit Fox STI. But I'm going, they want to sell it. It's only $12. It's nothing. Like, it's, like if you want a really high quality aircraft, go to one of the Carinado aircraft. Like, this is absolutely amazing so far. So there are four liveries that come with this, as well as the... As well as, um very interesting stuff. I'll show you deliveries when we get to the end of the flight, um, which will be not for a while. So if you want to stick around for the whole flight, feel free to go ahead and let me know in the comments below that you have done so. I will really highly appreciate that if you do that. That gets not only my watch time up, but it also shows that you're interested in, in the Japan World Update. So I usually upload flight sim videos on Fridays because it because flight simulator starts with an F and my not flight sim Fridays. But instead, I did a, a um, town of Salem video for no, what I know. I did an American truck simulator video on Friday in the um, Western Star 49X, um, which if you have missed that, I highly recommend you check it out. But yeah. So we're now at 16,000 feet, about 3,000 feet to go. The plane does really well with this aircraft for climbing, but just remember don't activate vertical speed, use the pitch reference instead. Because otherwise, your aircraft is going to crash into the ground. Uh, don't ask me now how I know that, I just do. 
it's annoying. But anyway, so yeah, you can see like all the all the uh, games are working very correctly. So by the time we go over 18,000, that's gonna be our transition altitude. That means when we go to 2992 high altitude, um, high altitude um, um, phase distance and all that once again. I might take the photo now whilst we're climbing uh, for the thumbnail. So let me just quickly set some things up in the assistance here so we can get rid of a couple of stuff that we don't need. Such as the routes and waypoints and then we can get rid of the... So let me just save that really quickly. Let's go... Oh, that's my chair. Let's ignore that because there's something missing around my chair. Now I'm going to go quickly into close the uh, objective screen really quickly. Go into drive mode. There's drive mode. We can fly, see our flight over to the beautiful chair. Let's go into where the light is shining. Uh, I need to hide those people. There's a lot of people flying in Japan currently. Can I actually hide those name tags? I think it's under Nav A to fix still. No, it's not. How do you turn that off? How do you turn that off? Because we've got lots of people in Japan. I want. I think that's under general. I'll try to work it out. I haven't done this. Uh, looking for traffic. So we've got real time online, and then we turn tra traffic nameplates off. There we go. Apply and save that as well. Haven't had this turned off in a bit. There we go. Oh, you kidding me? See so Japan sort of there. Thank you, Spread Shot. There you go back to here. Find out what the hell this aircraft is doing. That'd be great. And then I'm gonna go quickly go to assistance. Turn the uh, navigation aids back on. It's cool when it's got this. Then go turn the name tags back on so we can shout out some people while I fly. Uh, traffic, name tags on. Save. Can wait for it to save. There we go. Perfect. So away we go. Two thousand feet to go. We're going as fast as we can uh, because I think if we do more, we'll stall out. I think thousand feet per minute for this plane is perfect. So now we're going to talk about some of the automotive news. And we'll start with Zach Baldy uh, went to Matsuri and got a lap, a couple of laps in the. Lynn Luke Fink's cars, as well as James Nolan's cars, and a whole bunch of stuff. He didn't enter the R33 because when the um, tickets came available, he was pulling up the um, pulling out the engine and doing a rebuild of that play, um, car. So quite sad that the R33 didn't make it to Matsuri. It might be making it next time because it literally sold out when he when he was trying to rebuild the car. He wasn't sure that the car was going to be ready, but it and it was. Okay, I need to actually increase the um, pitch if I can. Is that at 5 degrees still? Yeah, let's increase it a little bit more. So we can go a little bit faster, smoothly but surely. Um, yeah, so that's a bit very sad. He, he, he might even do a video checking out all the cars in the car park. And everything, like all the very cool cars there. Like I've been seeing a couple of um, drift cars there. And a whole bunch of more stuff there. As well. So how fast are we going? We're doing 140. Uh, ground speed, which is not great. Okay, we're past 18,000 feet. We're going to count around to 2,992. We're 1,000 feet to go to 19,000. Then we can pick our speed up and continue on. Okay, now it's starting to be funky again. Which is no fault but the actual um, wind itself. I blame it on the wind. It's very windy today here in. Um, and it's minus, we're currently in the minus 4 territory. What if I can actually request 19,000 feet as our cruising altitude? Nah. I'll stick to 20,000 feet. But yeah. So it's, it's definitely going to be a flicker between 500 and 1,000 because of how windy it is. Because where's the wind uh, Where's the wind coming from? I don't, I don't have a wind meter in this plane, don't I? No. I like the uh, G1000 or T3000 that doesn't have a wind indicator, wind speed. 
Okay, there we go. 400 feet to go. Yeah, we probably have to climb 2,000 feet, which won't take long at all. And then we'll be at cruising altitude. So yeah, I hope you do enjoy this flight. This is something we're going to be doing for, like, like I said, for the next couple of weeks. Okay, eight, 200 feet. Let's go ask ourselves to climb 20,000 a minute. Which I believe is our cruising altitude. 100 feet. It started slower now because it started to get level. As you can see, we're getting level to 19,000 feet. So yeah, now we're getting leveled up now. Easily as that. Still a little bit longer. A little bit more climbing. Now we're at 19,000 feet. Then we just sit here at 19,000 feet. Perfect. And there's our... There's another island there. We'll be exploring a lot of Japan for the next couple of weeks, like I said. So I can't wait to do, I'll do that with you. I hope you are ready to do that with me. But yeah, we'll be continuing on. 19,000 feet, we've leveled, and we're sweet. So now we're just, there, yeah, just, yeah, just keep listening to out some radio calls. We're about 58 minutes away, because our speed's come, coming up now. We're going 160 knots ground speed. Um, I don't give a crap. Uh, but saying it's negative 0.6 knots, so if you are watching for Caronado, please fix that issue. Uh, fix it to what the actual climbing speed is. I figure you did that with the Cessna as well. Been to our levels like 74 knots. So, what I want this VDC button does, if I think I can push this button. Oh, it just flicks that to 13.4 amps, that's what we want 13.4 volts. So, you can actually choose it between volts and amps, which is very cool. So, whilst we're flying, we might as well start talking about what this aircraft is like to fly. So, uh, so far it's pretty pretty good, as you can see it's following the GPS quite well, if I go down here, if I can, you can see we're flying st straight ahead, we're not swaying like the other aircraft used to do, it actually is flying very very well straight on the GPS line, which is what we want, and yeah, I mean, you, there's a, I mean, I'll, I mean, yeah, well, I might as well actually finish the news, so yeah, so yeah, you can fly that, so make sure you check out Sackboard if you are into Matsuri content, he has the which is like a drifting comp in here in Australia. I believe it's in Japan as well, but for here in Australia, that's the case. We also have Carwell checking out the Mercedes-Benz AMG GT, the new 730 horsepower V8 monster from Mercedes-Benz, the most powerful car that Mercedes has ever built. I reckon that's road legal. Which is absolutely amazing. It's a twin turbo V8 with race car aero and some beautiful orange. Make sure you do check that out. And yeah. So that's the case. So very, very cool indeed. And yeah. Um, and also, too, uh, DDE's been checking out a couple of new supercars to replace their McLaren P1. They can't insure it, so they can't take the car because they got denied for business insurance. Which is absolutely stupid, so he, they would be selling that car back to where they bought it from. And getting four new supercars instead, he's probably going to get two Lamborghinis and two McLaren. I think he's getting a 620R and a 765 LT. As well as an Aventador SVJ and maybe another Huracan, maybe? Or, they might be getting another two, two V12 Lamborghinis, I'm not too sure. Actually, I think they're getting an Urus, I think, as well. To do like an off-roading build. Which is pretty cool, but yeah, they got the P1 for a brief moment of time. And yeah. And yeah. Also, might as well give you one more new story before we talk about this aircraft. Street Speed 717 has bought another V8 powered car. I'm going to guess this is the next giveaway after the Gallardo, I'm pretty sure it would be, because I don't think it's giving away the C6. So, I wonder what he's got. It's a V8, and, he, and he's also bought another truck as well, apparently. It's another truck, he's had another truck. Yeah. 
but it's definitely not buying another McLaren for sure. So yeah, very very cool indeed. Um, Val can't wait to see. He's also doing a video tomorrow, checking out the McLaren 765 LT, which is the new replacement for 675 LT. Uh, very beautiful cars. I don't think um, he will be getting one because he's had three McLarens and they are all terrible. Well, not terrible. They were great cars except for reliability and that too. I guess we'll talk about one more person. Before, but before we do that, we're going to Tokyo Center. One three two decimal six nine or three yeah, zero. Yeah, Saturday asked us to um asked us to Tokyo Center Juliet yeah. Alpha zero nine or three zero flight level one nine or zero. So yeah, we'll go back to um yeah talking back to um, Juliet Alpha zero nine or three zero Tokyo. I've also got news I was talking about. Oh yeah, Auto Auto Rebuild has got two brand new cars for the channel. He's got a 2010 Mitsubishi Lancer ES. And a two, 1975 MGB. So he's got three classic, no, two classic cars because he sold a Plymouth for a period, that's right. He's got a Dodge Coronet, which is currently at Weird Beard Auto Sales getting um, body work done. And he's also now got the MGB um, 1975, which is very cool. Like, he's starting to get like all of his classic cars to build in classic cars. Like, that's absolutely amazing. Obviously, he's got his new cameras and stuff and everything like that. <coughs> And yeah, I'll be catching up on his videos. I'm currently up to, I think, one of the Copart walk-arounds. Uh, I believe I've just finished one. You can do the um, calling system inside of the... Um, the calling system inside the um, Plymouth Fury. I'm up to that. I'll pass that video. I'm up to another Copart walk-around. With the GoPro Hero 9 that he just got. Which is absolutely phenomenal quality. And I've watched him check out the GMC here and everything like that. So yeah, I'll be catching up. I'm still catching up with his videos slowly but surely, because I have missed a lot of his videos uh, because I was I was in the middle of watching the 50 minute coronet video because I want to keep the videos in chronological order. So if I miss one YouTuber's videos, I'll have to watch the rest before I see what he got up to. And yeah, cool. So our pressures are very good, as you can see. Like we we've got very stable RPM, stable bug pressures and stuff like that. Which is good. We've got about 47 minutes off the trip. So hopefully we can get there if it crashes and then yeah we might not see a flight simulator video in a couple of weeks once if that's an issue. But hopefully we don't see any crashes. But yeah we so like I said usually we would be uploading these on Friday but Friday is going to be Town of Saddle covered. We usually have two episodes two full game, full left game uh, full left gameplay episodes of Town of Saddle when we play three game modes uh, rather when whether it is the um, rotating game mode, which I missed this week for rotating game mode because of, I'm doing it on Friday, or if it's a um, like yeah, town trader already and rate right to practice at this time. But yeah, we're we're coming close. We're up to game 30 of that as well. Well, today will be game 31 because I would have came home. This video will be out, and I'll be currently playing game 31. So if you play Town of Salem, I might be on. I might be on here already. On 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 Town of Salem, playing my thirty first game. So if you are play, if you're a Town of Salem player, which is a, if you don't play, it's kind of like Among Us, and so what the Among Us is based on. So you have like fifteen players, uh, some of them are evil, some of them are town, and they actually you actually have to fight kill all the town that town if you're evil, or call the kill all the evil if you're town. So you know, the lynch all the evils, kill all the evils, or. Um, Execute the um, evils. Depending on what you are, there's there's many different roles. I highly recommend you check out Town of Salem if you have if you're an Among Us player. That's pretty much the OG sort of social deduction game in a way. It's based on Mafia, and yeah, because I know lots of people are playing um, Among Us now, but I really recommend Town of Salem. Town of Salem is a lot of fun. Just as long as you don't um, screw up your um, don't screw up a lot of things. Just like I have today when I was trying to record rate practice. I screwed up my game, losing it almost to um, town. Because everyone's going to go get seven, get seven. I don't know it was one werewolf. So that was yesterday's game. Where we had medium section, we had three mediums in that game, which was absolutely crazy. Well, my medium that died, I thought that was this guy. So I was going, oh yeah, this person's been here. And the jail says, oh yeah, this person's been here. And that was actually a really good game until the point that Mafia actually won. 
which, which was a fair lose, honestly. They played really, really well. Anyway, we've got less than 45 minutes to go to our, um, to our destination. So, in case you don't know, I think I mentioned it before, ETE is for the estimated time of arrival to the airport. So the airport is so the airport that we're going to is in the middle of nowhere. So I'm not like a like a, a very uh, beautiful island, which we will see very soon. We're about 27 miles from the next thing, which will take us a couple of minutes. We're doing 175 knots towards our ground speed, which is what's this say? Uh, looks like about 135 airspeed. What's there? So if I press this button, I can't press this button. So we're doing 10.8 gallons per hour, which is not too bad. Our fuel product, like everything's in the ground besides for our cylinder head temperatures, which means we have to adjust our mixture, which we can do so, like, so I think I press control shift F2. Bring the cylinder head temperatures down a little bit into the green. Not only that too, it actually um, brings our temperature. Yeah, see, it's going down. It's going down slowly, but I don't want to completely lead it out. It might not go down, actually, honestly. I might just lower the throttle as well. If I lower the throttle. No. It's not going down. I'm going to bring it back to back full throttle. Full max, full mixture. That's completely okay. 433 Fahrenheit's not too bad. Oil pressure always would tempt to have a very grain, so they're performing solid. Yeah, so we'll keep we'll keep going. So yeah, what else is there to talk about? So Japan is looking beautiful, as you can see it's over there. We'll be doing a lot of flying around Japan, like I have said before, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we'll be flying a Cessna I think it's a Cessna Citation we're flying next, Cessna Citation CJ4, the C twenty five C, which comes in the standard game. And then we'll be flying some other aircraft but we might not be flying them at all, we might find the jets first. So we can go and then we can do the shorter. Okay, we're loading stuff apparently. And yeah, so it's nice and calm out. We can't get here. 175 knots, we're doing 21, we've got 21 miles to go to the next leg. 40 minutes to go to this plane. So let's just sit back and just chill out. Let's go just sit back and chill. Jesus Christ. Uh, yeah, just sit back and chill. For about for the next 20 miles until we have to descend. So hopefully you've all been having a great weekend. Hope you had a good weekend. And for you, you know, for you Australian people, hope you had a very good Labor Day as well, which was, which is the day I'm filming. This is actually all Labor Day. I had to tell it a Labor Day. And yeah, and I heard Trump has the uh, situation now over there in the U uh, US. And um, you know what? Uh, that kind of sucks. Um, but it's also a good thing too. It goes to show you that the thing that he promised doesn't even work. So that means it's not at all. Because they're going, oh, the, um, there's going to be a COVID, you know, there's going to be a vaccine next month. I doubt that's the case. Because, obviously, it didn't work, so it might not be till next year, because it, well, it's, cause it's not safe. Like, it's not safe, you can't tell. Well, so that when the vaccine comes, which will be next year from here in Australia, early 2021, is when they're hoping to have it. They would be out of the pandemic, and then hopefully that gets shared around the world, and then boom, pandemic done. Which I hope you guys have been still having, taking it easy through this pandemic as well, and making sure you're um, following the rules and everything like that, and not um, and not complaining too much, and not yelling, being carrot and stuff. Which yeah, which yeah, we are. We've been, we've been here in South Australia. We've done a fantastic job of it with the um, pandemic. To the point where we've almost pretty much eliminated it in a way, which is good. But still, people that will have it like from like coming coming back from other countries, like trying to get home from, say, India or something like that. People will have it, but then they'll have to go into quarantine, and then once they go into quarantine, then they come out and test negative, and they're clear of it. That means we'll be fine. There we go. Thank God, we don't have to go into another um, lockdown. Like your poor Victorians over there. I feel so bad for you. Um, 19th is only a week away, um, make sure you're still following the rules that the Premier has set, otherwise it'll be longer. But yeah, maybe I don't really 
it's poor that guys as issued, but they're not going politics. This is our political political um, video, so let's not make it that. But make sure you follow the rules and everything like that, and you'll get there. Because it looks like it's died down over there as well. But yeah, obviously if you see, if you're from Japan, and if you see your house uh, from up here, which you probably won't, but if you do, uh, let me know down in the comments below. Um, obviously speaking, literally because I don't know every, or speaking here in or Katakana, because I don't know a lot of, um, I don't know a lot of, Jap I don't know much of Japanese, like much kanji and stuff. I, only, I know basic stuff, like what some of the verbs are, but, yeah. In other news, so I guess I'll announce this, um, GD City Gaming is now back. In case you don't know, I used to be part of GD City Gaming YouTube channel. I used to do like convoys and stuff of it a couple of years ago, back when I, my channel was at. Back when my channel was active and I was doing streams with um, uh, Senior and um, Junior. Um, that channel is now back and they're not just doing truck channels for now, for now until Senior's um, workload has been uh, sort of died down. Well, it should be good to see the channel back. I kind of miss having that YouTube channel. Um, I'll have to catch up very stream that they did on Among Us. I would love to see how they went with that. But yeah, it's quite. It's good to see that that channel is back and operating again. So they'll be operating weekly now until CD comes back and making truck content again with um, yeah, maybe Junior and all that stuff, doing like mod reviews and weekly drives, all that stuff. Back when the old format, when the format actually worked. That's when I used to tune into Studio City Gaming all the time. So it's good to see that the channel's back. And yeah, I'll be back to watch them. Not week weekendly, because it's like 10 o'clock. I'll probably be doing other stuff at that time. But hopefully, they uh, bring the channel fully to back to the way it was, because that's the way we liked it. I mean, because most people don't like to dub change. But yeah, I'll be seeing more videos of um, Judy City Gaming, hopefully very, very soon. Because it sounds promising that, that that channel is going to come back to the way it was a couple of years ago, back when they were making videos. Because I think they stopped making mod reviews and stuff because of um, uh, people complaining about stuff and everything like that. So they stopped that. Hope they bring that back. And the way it was because they were show off oh, this truck didn't do the vote stuff and rating out of ten. And if I if they bring it back the way they like that, I'll be back to watch them every single day. But I'm glad to still be part of the Junior City Gaming community and then and then I'll be bringing back because the reason is, if you are watching this um, Junior City Gaming, um, the reason why I stop buying on Patreon because you're not making videos. Why would I continue when I'm making when you're not making videos? That's not that doesn't really make sense. But uh, it's good to see that the channel's now back and Junior's managing it. So hopefully Junior and Senior make videos again. Like it used to be, like the original, the original, original setup. I'd love to see Junior do some videos and stuff like, I don't know, anything. But obviously he's doing the streams, but... Yeah. But hopefully we'll see some more stuff on the program again. Anyway, full miles until the next waypoint, we're going Koshi. We're 35 minutes away from the airport, about well, 36 minutes away from the airport. So we'll be doing a visual approach, I'm pretty sure it's doing a ILS approach for this airport. Sadly. And for some reason the, the um, line there is alternate colours. So we're on a white line now, so then we go to the purple, which might suit to white. It's usually the purple the current leg. So that is cost you right there. But it's doing really well. This plane is doing fantastically. Like, no issues. It's warming up. It's, um, yeah, the engine's um, running great. It's at 430, um, still the head temperature. Here we go, the next one's about 48 miles away. I think it's actually on that island there, that airport. So it might be a bit. I think we need to start um, descending soon. But yeah, this air. So um, let's. Now that we've got all the news and stuff away, all the talking away, let's talk about this aircraft and how, what I think of it. So we'll start with the pros, and then we'll talk about the cons, so we've got the bumper now. So first of all, the pros. This aircraft is unique, like the interior is unique. Uh, the only thing that's not unique is the GNS-530. That's the only thing they have left from a default aircraft. Apart from that, I mean, 
the um, gauges. They're not in any other default aircraft. Um, the actual aircraft design is not from a default aircraft. It's a very unique aircraft, and I give it credit for that. It's the most unique one that Carolina has made. So that's that. And it's also the fact that it's a very high altitude to fly, and it's also got a very quick cruising altitude speed compared to whatever other other pay where aircraft is available, which is great. So that's it. There's actually a lot of things to talk about. This aircraft, this aircraft is absolutely brilliant. Um, and it's also really easy to start. There's no, I mean, yeah, well, we'll talk about the cons in a minute. Yeah, it's really, really easy to start, and it's a very, very good aircraft to fly. It's very stable. It's smooth. It's quiet. It's at 2,500 RPM. It doesn't use much fuel. It's using 10.7 gallons per hour. Which we do have 37 gallons left to the destination, which is not too bad. And yeah, very easy aircraft to understand. The cons, number one. I would have to say there's no checklist, which is annoying, uh, because, yeah, because it would help to know how to fly this aircraft. So that's that, and that's pretty much the only comment that there's no checklist. I honestly think this is the best aircraft right now available for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So do I recommend it? Absolutely, go ahead and purchase it. The Air 20 Ovation is definitely well worth the money you spend on it, it's about 40 something dollars Australian. I highly recommend you purchase it. And yeah. So you can either sit through the Windows Store or Steam on the Steam version, it goes to Steam, turn it into like credits, then you can buy and download it. Which is good. So I highly recommend it. It's so it's such a good aircraft. I saw some video, I saw some photos on the uh, Flight Simulator 2020 Facebook group. And it looks great. Like it honestly looks great. Yeah. So, the video schedule for the rest of the week. So tomorrow we will be playing Omsi 2. Thursday and Friday it's Town of Salem. Saturday and Sunday. Saturday is episode 10.2 of Omsi 2, which will be the MANNG. Make sure you tune into that. Because I'll announce what the next um, category of buses are. And then on Sunday it is also Omsi 2. The no common two drives begin. And then back to regular schedule next week of Monday, Tuesday, Town of Salem. Wednesday, Omsi 2. Thursday, Town of Salem Classic. And then Friday, Omsi 2. And Friday, Flight Simulator 2020. And yada 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 for the rest of the week. Yeah, so that's that's a regular schedule. I like how keeping it to a schedule as well. That means then I can keep like some videos the same days, which is great. Like I, that means if I if something fails, then something fails. I can revert to the original schedule if I change it. Which this hasn't failed yet, which I'm so highly surprised it hasn't yet. But yeah, it's definitely a great aircraft to fly. This aircraft. I believe that is actually where we need to go. That's the um, actual um, island we need to go go to for it for where we land. We should be getting ready to descend very soon. ATC should be telling us to descend, but yeah. But hopefully you'll be hopefully you do enjoy the next couple of flights of later episodes when we check out the world update. I think the world update is definitely a big thing, and then I think so. Then it's North America next. We might be number four. Like uh, Australia, I love to do a world update around Australia, like doing like le multiple legs around Australia. Like do a flight around Australia showing you every um, town of Australia, and what's unique about them, everything like that. Because I'm Australian, in case you can't tell uh, from my accent, I'm actually from Australia, um, South Australia to be exact. Um, yeah, fair, yeah, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, beautiful, um, except for winter and spring, which is very. Which have this this spring has been having alter, alt, um, alternating te um, temperatures seriously. All right, so we are thirty minutes away from landing. Our our, our video has been going for about an hour now, so hopefully you are, you are still tuned in. Say Moody in the um, um, comments down below if you are still watching now. Moody, that's M O O N E I. Moody, because we're flying a Moody. Uh, we're almost at the end of the trip anyway. So that's good. And yeah, this will be um, yeah, today's video, rather than Town of Saturn Cover, which will be coming out on Friday. So make sure you tune into that. Um, let's probably check out, I think it's Town Trader, Cover Trader, I mean, whatever it is, Cover Town Trader, as well as um, Cover Already, as well as Right to Practice, where we should be up to game 30. Hey, on 32 will be tomorrow. I mean, no, 31 tomorrow. 32 Wednesday. 33 Thursday. Yeah, game 34, 35, and 36. 
So soon I won't be playing the game every single day, I'll be playing it um, exclusively on Channel Off and Because the only reason why I'm playing it every single day is because I want those games up to go up very quickly so we can get back to raid. And start leveling up our ELO to see if we can get up to 2000 ELO, if not higher, in the long term. So we'll be playing. I won't say what we're doing for episode 100 because that's coming up very, very soon. soon. We're up to 85 episode now, we'll be coming up to episode 100. I've got a pretty good plan for that video. And we'll see how it goes, and that's when we hold off Tower of Salem until I finish my course. Because I won't have time to do it, unless I do it on a weekend or something like that. We'll see how it goes. So we've got 10 miles to go until we need to, hopefully, hopefully the um, ATC will descend us soon. It's been, they've been pretty quiet, which is great. But it means we're doing the right fee. I believe that's the island we're actually uh, descending to. I believe that's the island because if I remember correctly, I found out is that Mount Fuji over there? Is that Mount Fuji? Oh, what's happening over there? Oh, what's happening all the way over there? But yeah, you can see the interior is very good quality as well. That's another pro. I think that's Mount Fuji over there. Or Mount Everest. It's either Mount F F Everest or Mount Fuji. Well, Fuji. Fuji. That's how you say it. Fuji. Say it after me. Fuji. That's how you pronounce it because that's how you pronounce it in Japanese. Fuji. Fuji ha or something like that? I, I don't know. It's a weird way of saying it. Fuji ha, I think that's it. If I remember correctly. If my Japanese um, doesn't fail me. Because <laughs> I don't remember anything from Japanese two years ago, honestly. I'll, I'll work it out. Yeah. But I still remember some things like hiking and Disney yeah, or, or Giga Disco and that good stuff. All the basic stuff I still remember. And, oh, and well, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good afternoon, all that is. Like, oh, hi, I'm as I must be. It's good morning. And then you have Konnichiwa, which is good afternoon. Oh! That's actually what happened there. Alright, that's our approach. So we got Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors visual runway tree to approach Niner Tree Zero. And I could show you, um, I was actually gonna do it the other way, but I had issues trying to um, take off from this um, air, um, runway um, runway. I'll show you why when we land, we're about eighty miles away, so we're actually getting into a descent. So we're still following the GPS for a little bit longer and if it tells us to turn left heading. So we've Maintaining present heading and altitude, we are officially okay. So the other approach, we don't have ILS and it's our runway, which is very fine. So we've got three miles to the next one. We'll just keep following the GPS until we get there. I don't think you can program the um, program the um, fee here. So if I go to procedure. Select approach. Could, but there's no, oh, you can't do that because we need to fly visually. So that's where we go, that's where the airport is, about 80 miles to our 10 o'clock ish, about 11 10 o'clock. So we're actually flying due north. So we fly past Mopa now, then we go to my map, which is 50 miles away, and then we'll be getting ready to um, land the aircraft there. But yeah, so cool. But right, that's the actual trip, pretty much almost finished. Uh, this aircraft has done phenomenally well. Um, I highly recommend you go ahead and purchase it. I give it an eight out of ten. There's a couple of things they could change and stuff like that. Like um, obviously the GPS is a bit funny. Yeah, okay, there we go. Now it's changed a little bit. So as soon as we go to runway three two, we can change the course to three two zero. That's where we're landing, and then we can actually put it on a local. Watch it, it's not going to be by localizers and stuff because it's a visual. But this aircraft has done so well. So if you live on this island, let me know in the comments below in English or in Hiragana or Kanagana. Kana. If you live there, just say I live here or Bokuma, Bokuno. I forgot what the word for house is. Or Bokuwa, Watashi. 
What house you know? I'm trying to remember what house, what the word for house is. Is that Huber or hang on? Is that Huber? Oh, stop! What is it? Sorry, I've to cheat a little bit. House in. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. What was I thinking of? Yeah. So, but, but say like, what does he do? Yeah, well. Oh, what has he done? Yeah, got Alimus. That's what the, what you say in Japanese. Japanese, isn't it? That means there is my house. Uh, Niner three zero, please expedite your descent to two thousand four hundred feet. You didn't ask me to take to descend to twenty four hundred. All right, we're going to climb down to twenty four hundred feet. Jesus Christ! You didn't tell me to do that. All right, let's descend now. So yeah. Okay, all that. There we go. We're descending now. Let's descend as quick as possible. We're starting our descent now. That's yeah. That's directed to me. Yeah. Nine hundred three zero descent to twenty four hundred feet. But yeah. So e air is your um, word for Japanese. That's right. Uchi. Zero, please expedite your descent to 2,400. Yeah, we're just don't panic. We're at, but it's going to be a very long descent. You should have told us to do that. Yeah, yeah. Actually, e is outside, but e is also means house. That's right. Because I was thinking on Goku, but on Goku means music. But yeah, so we are. So if you see your e air, um, comment down below, please, Kudasai. Yeah, I, I do know it in Japanese, as you said. So I say, say, say that Motashi or Boku, depending if you Boku no, Boku no ie ga arimas. There is my house. <laughs> I know how to speak Japanese. So, alright, we're 20 minutes away. Because we're descending. So, we can leave full throttle because we're actually descending at 200 knots. So we can actually expedite this descent. But, yeah, I know my Japanese. I hope, you're, I hope you're proud of me for saying that. I haven't spoken in Japanese in like two years, like since year 12. Which is absolutely crazy, in case you don't know, I actually, um, I'm actually a tertiary student currently. I would, yeah, hence the being, because I was, I would, I wouldn't have this if it was, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have this if I was still, if I was still at school. My beard and my moustache or anything like that. I, if I was still at school, I'd have to shave yourself every single day. That's a choice they'll go to a private school. I mean, come on. I believe it's the same with every other school. Yeah, you like clearly shave. And, um, yeah, because I remember when I was doing my course in year 12, uh, one, of the, one of the students there got told by my teacher, it's like, oh, it's nice to see you clearly shaven. I was like, yeah, oh, do you have that rule here too? I think that because it's sort of like a public school sort of thing. It's, it's weird, that school, that was. Yeah. So we're slowly descending, just past an hour and eight minutes. And if you haven't been watching the whole video, um, let me know, let me know down in the comments what they've missed at the end. Uh, just like, oh, you missed. Don't say the actual thing what they've missed. It's like, oh, if you did watch the whole video, you missed this something a funny thing, which it could be something funny. You never know. Or you missed the worst landing end or best landing ever or something like that. Just be like clickbaity sort of something. Watch baity. I'd love to see that in the comments because I've seen what um, Zach Baldy did that before. Uh, for, for, I'll just copy that as well. For a bit. Alright, we're 16,000 feet. Let's calibrate our, um, our, um, altimeter. As we descend down past 18,000, 16,000 feet. And climb and, and county down towards 2400 feet before we get ready to land. So we're 60 miles or what 60 nautical miles away from the airport. So I think we've got one more leg to go on the uh, one more leg to go on the um, GPS before we head into the airport, so we're 16 minutes away. That was a very good flight. I actually really enjoyed that flight through Japan for you guys. That was a lot of fun. 
actually just flying in the ocean. That was actually a lot of fun. It's very, very cool to see the um, new handbuilt airports. I'm hoping they do Australia, like do all the um, hand, all the main airports handbuilt, like Adelaide, um, Adelaide, Canberra, uh, Brisbane, Darwin. I think Darwin's ham no, Darwin's not. Um, Perth, Hobart, like all the main airports. Um, have built and they also do the world update for that. I think that's number four, I reckon, or five. I kind of wish, yeah, wish we got a world update. I mean, our, our um, Australia doesn't look too bad, but it needs a bit of an update. It definitely does. Some things aren't right. Like, I would love to see this turn to like a funny grammar tree city. But yeah, we'll just, we'll just get this aircraft down. 15 minutes, 15 minutes to go till I can see an island there. That must, that must be the island we're landing at. Actually, that's the island thing next to it. I'm not too sure though. But this aircraft did phenomenally well. Obviously, we're using more um, fuel flow because we're descending. I don't mind sticking to full throttle for doing this. Because it keeps that speed up. If I asked last week, but not even more, I could. So we're still 14,000 feet, so we might actually expe exp expedite it a little bit more. So like I say, minus 5 degrees, like I've been doing. Let's expedite it a little bit faster than that. Because I know we can do it. That, that there should do. Because we've got a huge descent to go. But yeah, that is the first flight, and well, might be the last flight, in the M20R. So we'll get this landing done, so we can check out what... I oh, can't even forget remembering what to say. Let's see to... hang on, I'll try and forget this right this time. So when we get into Swano Sejima, Swano Sejima, Swano Sejima, Swano Sejima, Swano Sejima, there goes Swano, Swano Sejima, Swano Sejima, there goes Swano Sejima. There we go. I can say it right. Swano Se. So we're almost into Swano Sejima, which is all the way down, down there, as you can see, 40, 50 miles to go. Landing very, very quickly. Well, getting close to 2400 2, feet as we get ready to land this aircraft in about 11 minutes oh it's only 11 minutes away holy crap that's how quick it is that's why we have to descend now and we'll see how this aircraft land let's see how how I land this aircraft and then we'll park it well, there's only two parking spots in this on this um, mountain airport there's 11,000 feet. So we're doing 50.1 gallons per hour. We're doing about 190 indicated airspeed. 230 ground speed. That's actually a lot of speed. Okay, we're coming out close to 10,000 feet now. We're coming in red hot, I should say. Like fire, in a way. Yeah, so no, it's less than ten thousand feet to go. So that will that notch there will, will disappear now. Because they are less than ten thousand feet from the ground. So yeah, we'll be landing in ten minutes. That's the island there. One of those. Well, that's some islands there for you to have a look at whilst we're descending so we have I think that's the island that we're landing at 
So let's see if I can see. I think it's this one. Maybe. Oh no, it might come up soon. So we're at night, less than, yeah, there we go, 8,000 feet now. Well done, aircraft, well done. Make sure that's calibrated. As we're coming to a very oh, beautiful looking airport, in my opinion. This is the only airport I've seen. I haven't seen it, and also Nagasaki Airport. I have not seen any other airports. Uh, that will remain a secret till next week when I fly the next plane. Which I'll fly myself for a bit so I can get used to it and work out like climbing speed and everything like that.
FB Center Juliet Alpha 09 Tree 0 requesting vector to next waypoint. Traffic Juliet Alpha 09 er 306 miles southeast inbound visual runway tree 2. 